We didn't come this far to slow down now. Let 2021 be the year that you light up, that you wake up, that you shake up that special something in your soul, that you reach out and work for that health, that life, that vibrant living you know is possible. Let this be the year. Let this be the day. Let this be the moment that you believe in miracles again. Hey, everybody, it is Dr. Devin, and I'm so excited. It's so funny to me to watch how life weaves its way um, through. I met this guy way back in the day when we were both in chiropractic school um, in leadership forms them and some things just don't change, right? They just evolve. And now here we find ourselves in 2021. We're both practicing chiropractors. We're both leaping out into podcast world. We're both hosting Freedom Revival. So I would venture to say that we might be, um, you know, soul brother and sister of sort. <laughs> this is Dr. Stan from California. Dr. Stan, thank you so much for being with us today. Devin, I'm so grateful to be here. I think <sighs> as you shared on my podcast, like mm. uh, to see the wake of your guys' event and you literally like tapping me on the shoulder and saying, well, you're going to do one now. And it, um, I, I, lo- I look at my life and there's, there's some key moments um, that have painted the rest of my life. They've literally like created the rest of my life and literally our freedom, our heart of freedom, freedom revival in San Diego next to our wedding day and next to the birth of my child was easily. And maybe, maybe the graduation day from West Point and my deployment to Iraq. I, I put the heart of freedom number three, I put it number three at this stage, you know, and the reason is, is because I think there are people like you did, right? You, you have this attraction, you know, this event that comes to you and then all of a sudden you, it evolves into this big thing. And we, we didn't know how many people in the state of California, which is, you know, easily top two in the highly oppressed states at this stage, how many people wanted freedom. Mm-hmm. And we sold 809 tickets. And we had over a thousand people there and it was standing room only. It was like a speakeasy event. It was, and then it was just fire all night, which I absolutely just, I came out of it um, probably more changed than anyone. It was our event. We hosted it, but I came out of it like absolutely transformed, which is amazing. It's, it's ironic, right? We, we choose a life of service because we feel called to it. And as we attempt to bring life to people, inevitably so much life is breathed back into you. Um, And you just, you just dropped some things, right? So for people who don't know you, let's rewind a little bit, take us through. I didn't even know that about you in your service days. So who are you? What's a little bit of background and then what are you up to in the here and now? Yeah. My name is Dr. Stanton Hom. I'm from San Diego, California. I grew up in LA, suburbia LA. I like to call it where um, if you've seen the movie Friday, uh, but you see the movie Friday after next, like my dad was like, he basically grew up in kind of that area of LA that mm-hmm. where all the Watts riots and all that stuff was. And then they moved us out to the suburbs. And so we grew up in suburbia LA and very traditional Asian American. And, um, I think two weeks after high school graduation, I was in the mud of basic training at West Point. Mm-hmm. And that led to a, you know, a nine year journey with active military that included a deployment to Iraq. And it's a wild thing to think about because a lot of people have always in practice, you know, being in practice, like we have been 10, 11 years, I have a third of my practice that's veterans and or active military because we're just a big Navy town in San Diego. And a lot of people make the comment, like, I can't really place you like in the military. I'm like, yeah, that's, it's, it's kind of a, an odd alternate universe that I was in previously. Um, and then here we are now, right? Here we are now in 2021, the entire year of last year, absolutely crazy. And I find myself using leadership skills and my devotion and conviction around freedom um, more so today than in the last 10, which is, you know, in my opinion, an amazingly service oriented leadership oriented career in focused on prenatal and pediatric chiropractic. I love what we've done and I love what we've created. 
And in the 10 years of practice, you, you know, what we're going to talk about those. And I've heard so many of those stories in your, in your podcast already, the miracles that we get to experience, like in our, with our own eyes, with our own hands. But the last year, it, it just, it, it has absolutely completely altered the course of my life. Mm -hmm. And it's because we chose very early on to ask ourselves the question, is my care more essential now? in times of crises, hysteria, and fear, is it more essential or less? And we were very clear. My entire staff came on board and said, we are more essential. We're not shutting down. We're not slowing down. We're not doing anything that is, you know, going to further what we know know is like the agenda, essentially. The fear ridden, you know, the completely double, triple, however many masks is gonna come out next. And in my opinion, like our practice on our podcast is called future generations because that's what it was for me. It was, it was looking my daughter in the eye on a daily basis, even this morning and saying, am I fighting for you? And what world am I fighting for you? Mm -hmm. And that's what we've, that's painted our entire last year. And that's where we are today. You know, I would put us up against any other practice, amazing chiropractors in San Diego, amazing practitioners, amazing community of holistic practitioners. But I would say that we are in the top percentage of who's leading in this moment because we've chosen to amp up the volume. Yeah. 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 To not hold back um, with the push, but, but lean into yeah. um, all the difference in the world. And thank you, first of all, for your service. Um, Cause I didn't know that about you and um, it makes that grit and fire and power that I hear in your voice and your conviction and need to be at the front of the pack to protect and, and to create, to be an active participant in creating this future with and for your daughter. Um, that, you know, to be in Iraq and take those things that you have now learned. I'm sure it also, you know, today can feel like war for some people, right? I mean, wow. it's been a major assault on life as we've, we've known it. And um, so thank you for your service and, and that, I'm sure when you put yourself of like, we're more essential now, I want whoever is listening right now to close your eyes and place your hand on your heart and whatever your soul calling of service is mother, father, whatever career path you're on. I am more essential. Now you and I could stop this podcast right now. And that would be medicine that I think the whole world needs to hear. Yeah. And I, I, it's, it's, it's wild. Like, I don't know where it was somewhere in fall, somewhere around the fall where it wasn't just like me asking myself that question and that bleeding into my staff and my family, but it became like somewhere in the fall time. I was just like, how, how, how dare they, how dare anyone say that anyone on the outside of us, anyone outside of our own unique, intuitive knowing and understanding of what our truth is. How dare anyone say mm -hmm. that you're essential, you're not essential. Mm -hmm. Like, like that, that optic, you know, that, that mind warp that we've all been through has made us completely like we absolve all of it. We absolve all definitions of who we are to the outside. And I think that, that, I mean, they were, they were hugely successful at that. Yeah. Right. And I don't know if it's the same in, in where you are, you know, cause it's definitely different um, politically and it's, it's wild. Like my patients told me last week, last week there's a softball tournament. It's like, where's the softball tournament? Like, Oh, it's in uh, bullhead city, Nevada. We're like, Oh really? Why? <laughs> cause we can't play softball here. Right. We can't play softball in California. So like all the teams, virtually all the teams in this state, or sorry, Bullhead City is where they stayed. Arizona is where they're playing. But all the teams in this in this freaking tournament are from Southern California. Yeah. Like and, so. And people are fleeing your state, right? Yeah. And you're holding a very important ground of yeah. how dare they. Yeah. But it's also, well, what am I going to do about it? Right? Like you're not complaining. You're not yeah. on the sidelines pointing fingers at a at a imaginary they or getting yeah. caught up in the anger. No. You're using that this isn't right thing in your gut to fuel your mission. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, I've been inspired every step of the way. And that, that word essential, you and I are, again, birds of a feather because I immediately, when that came out, I made tank tops that said, we are all essential. 
Ooh, that, that just felt like a fundamental um, attack at our humanity and what it means. How dare anyone say yeah. that another human is not essential? So, right. I mean, words carry so much power and, and the, the inspiration that comes up in this podcast or where the name, I guess, came to me is you and I, have, we train, right? Like we are constantly, how do I get better? What organization can I be at? I mean, and that's been when we knew each other way back in school and ever, I would go to all those chiropractic things and I'd hear people if they knew what we knew, right? Mm -hmm. So there's all, there's lots of little things that we find along the way. We wish our patients knew, we wish the world knew, but I bet there's some big life perspective altering premises that once you got that, it yeah. changed the game for you as a person, as a parent. So if I, if I ask you the question, what's one thing that if you could wave your wand, the world would wake up and know tomorrow or remember tomorrow, what's, what's your one thing? You know, I, I, I had, I had a struggle with def, like actually choosing one, but I'm going to choose the one that I is, is, is a little bit less like, Oh my goodness. Right. It's, it's, it's so <laughs> it's, it's the phrase normalize normal. Mm. Right. And, and I, and I say that because, and, and when you see a lot of kids and when you see pregnancy, like midwives know, midwives know what normal physiological birth is. Right. And we have normalized conventional technocratic patriarchal mechanistic invasive you're, you're you're a disease not a natural form of how our life how life on the planet procreates um type of birth right that's that's what we've created as normal in society and kids with you know one and two having a chronic illness one in four having asthma you know one in 13 having severe allergies anaphylaxis based um one in six having a learning disorder one in nine having, you know, <laughs> one in nine having ADHD. Like you, you, you hear these stats and they just become numbers after a while. But if you really sit back and think about it, half of our child, children population, pediatric population have a chronic illness, which used to be reserved for the grandparents at the barbecue, you know, that they talk about the blood pressure or their kidneys, you know, and then it slowly but pervasively has creeped into our generation where people in our world, you know, you see them too. They come into our practice. You're like, Holy cow, you have so much stuff going on. And the patient that I just talked about, who's playing softball in another state, I invariably hear teen girls that say, I feel old, you know, or the kids that one in four required special ed and we've normalized that. And so when I say normalize normal, it becomes a theme in my practice where kids or sorry, parents, where kids start to express, their inborn potential, which I call normal health, which is the most plain Jane vanilla word in the world, but it's actually what I'm fighting for right now is just for people to remember that normal is freaking brilliant. It's yeah. the most beautiful thing that is life itself. Mm -hmm. And if we normalize that and you start there, I think it was, um, who's, who, shoot, what's that? There's a, there's a philosophical text that came out recently, not recently, I would say like in the last, it was basically a highlight of all the green books mm. and um, can't remember the author right now. And I, I don't want to remember him because he is actually from the very beginning of the lockdown uh, suggesting that we don't step up. Right. But in his book, he kind of said like very, the analogy was if you don't know what a normal $20 bill looks like, then how could you ever identify what a counterfeit is? And so when conventional medicine doesn't even recognize, which to the point last week, a mom came into my office. She said her baby rolled over on the table of their conventional pedi pediatrician, stared right at the pediatrician's eyes and smiled. And he said, oh, that's like a baby 20 years ago. They don't do that anymore. And I said, isn't that crazy? Like she told me that mm -hmm. because she was shocked because that's just normal in her world. And so parents will ask me, are my kids ahead? And I'll say, no, your kids are just normal. Your kids are just on time, vibrating at a high frequency, which is our innate well-being. That's what we're made from. And at the end of the day, everything else, like we can't normalize it. 
doesn't mean we marginalize it. doesn't mean we demonize it. doesn't mean we stigmatize it. doesn't mean we put anybody down. But if you don't recognize that abnormal is become absolutely normal in the world today and around in the world of health, you can't fix the problem. Amen. And, and, and I, I, I'm like, I'm stuck in those statistics because I can remember speaking at Cal Jam three years ago mm-hmm. and spouting off the same statistics. Yeah. So how much has changed? Right. And, um, and it's, it's not getting better. <laughs> and, and we have ear infections are normal. Constipation is normal. Autoimmune is normal. Diabetes is normal. Obesity is normal. You start to think about that and what have I, right? And we, I live in this world and even what have I allowed myself to let the bar change? Totally. Um, and what do, what do we hold the ground for? And, and so take us into, you know, um, what that, you know, how do, how do you bring that in your house, right? How, what are some tools where you turn that idea and concept into real life or what helps keep your family normal and healthy and vibrant. Yeah. And I think that's, that, that's a, that's a continual battle, right? Because on the day-to-day basis, especially now, I always say this, you know, on a day-to-day basis, like it's hard to be healthy. It's hard to be empowered. It's hard to be wealthy. It's hard to be positive or at least empowered thinking, you know, because of how the world has been completely captured by scarcity, by fear, by this normalization of chronic problems and health, like they've actually made us believe that we're genetically programmed for illness or we have no immune system, right? And so we start really simply, I'd say in different forms, because my wife and I do different things, you know, in terms of how we keep ourselves well, but we both have a theme where every morning we start our morning on our terms, you know, we start our morning with our own unique styles of morning routines where I would say the good first two hours of my day, hopefully, you know, depending on when the baby wakes up, right? Because full contact parenting. Right. Um, yeah, you know, and then and then doing that also with a, you know, being a conscious parent and actually caring about being there for my little one, you know? But it's been to the point where on this, you know, on our phones, we can have so many different resources. One of the things that I use every day is the Wim Hof app. Like I love breath work and I love the Wim Hof app because it's free. And because it just takes you through the process of how to actually breathe like this wild maniac dude, right. That can control his autonomic system, dive under. I I don't, I don't. Yeah. I can. So, so for me, there's normal, which is vibrant health. And then there's taking it to the next level, which makes you superhuman, you know? And so for me, like, it's to the point where if I'm with my daughter upstairs, I say, you know, Alana, you ready to go downstairs? And she goes, breathe. And she takes a big breath and she's 18 months, you know, she's been doing that since a year old. Well, and even us, me saying that he is superhuman. What if he's normal? Right. Exactly. Ah, we have no, like con- that, we have no concept what normal is now. Like that, right? right. And that'll be her normal because she's grown up in it. Yeah. And, and I, I don't know you've seen it in your practice too. Yeah. When people come in, I mean, people are not breathing. You guys, you're not breathing. You got to breathe. Your body, your brain, your spirit needs breath. So go get this app. I mean, what difference does breath make in your life? In my life. And so we just went through um, some of my staff is reading Atomic Habits. And I don't, I don't know the book. I'm not reading it. But every week we're going through how to create better, what they call micro habits. And one of the things that I just said is, is every day before you know, I adjust somebody, I'm going to make it very clear in my own mind that I'm going to tune into my breath mm-hmm. and I'm going to tune in my breath because the word inspiration is to inspire, right? It's to breathe in life. It's to breathe in inspiration. And when you exhale, I was, I interviewed a guy on my podcast. He's a breathwork expert. And he said that if you trained your breath for two weeks, and you did like a focused training on breath work, you could detoxify your body by 70%. And I was just like, and I just said, so what do you think about us being perceptively, you know, pervasively, consistently per- wearing masks? Yeah. yeah. Right? And so we're breathing in that excrement and they're showing that, you know, from bacterial pneumonia to microbes that are related to cancers, like to oxygen deprivation, carbon dioxide toxicity, 
it's wild, right? And so from a breathing perspective, you can get super spiritual mm -hmm. and say that's how we breathe in inspiration. That's how we breathe in the source of life. But you can get really database and just say, hey, this is actually really good for my body right. and every aspect of it, right? Tell me about the importance of getting adjusted. Amy. Yeah, I, you know, it's really interesting because <laughs> obviously I'm biased, mm -hmm. but, but it becomes, it, it's, it's an old adage in chiropractic, right? Structure and function, right? Mm -hmm. And if you read data that talks about things like tensegrity or mechanotransduction, then you know the shape and the alignment and the structural integrity of our body. Like if you're closed off and your shoulders are rolled forward and you have terrible posture, try to take a deep breath. Try to see what your vital, you know, what your vital capacity is. Like you, you can't actually do it. Or you can say, how good do you feel when you're slouched over and you're totally slumped yeah. over and try to feel elated or try to feel like at your optimal expression of who you are or try to feel absolutely depressed while you're standing in absolutely great posture right and so i love breath work i love acupuncture i love regenerative nutrition i love all the things homeopathy we do a lot of those at home but one thing that chiropractic does so uniquely is we understand the structural relationship to energetic healing in our bodies. And that if, and this is me saying like, I believe in the quantum, I believe in multiverses, I believe in absolute that we create the EMFs of our own body with our thoughts and our feelings as Joe Dispenza says, but until we can run through walls and until we leave space, like when we turn an anti-gravity environment, we are governed by the gravitational field that is earth. And if you don't have a good relationship with gravity, as the old school chiropractors would say, chiropractic works because gravity works. Mm. If chiropractic didn't work, you know, like if you don't have a good relationship with gravity, and this is, this is totally grounded in all the functional neurological, I've done like almost the full, I'm board eligible basically with the Carrick Institute. And that's everything that they talk about is that if you don't have a healthy relationship with gravity down to the segmental level, then you don't have optimal performance and function. It is what makes us, which I love just James Chestnut said, he was like, it doesn't like just, just because you're well adjusted doesn't mean you're well. So it's not just being adjusted, right. but you can't be well, you cannot be holistically, yeah. vitalistically, naturally well without being well adjusted. It is an absolute, in my opinion, the most essential form of healthcare today. Yeah, and imagine for a second, if every chiropractor woke Got up that. with that. Yeah. And, and stepped into that because I, I love you, chiropractic students, chiropractors, chiropractic assistants that are listening with us today. Um, and, it's been challenging for a lot of people with the restrictions, with the state by state chaos. And so speak to the, to the chiropractors, to the people in healing healthcare in general, um, how, how can they raise the bar and lean in? How can they tap into some of this drive and conviction that, that you've been moving with for the last year? How can they get that back in their bones and yeah. in that fire? I think one thing is remembering our history. One is, one is remembering our history. I'm a huge fan. And for the chiropractic students and chiropractic assistants and chiropractors out there, like, I don't think there's a more important um, resource than Simon Senzon's in the Institute Chiropractic. I don't think there is one of understanding where our history has come from, like what we've actually been through. Like he goes through virtually every jailed chiropractor, and when you remember that chiropractic, like we didn't go to jail for insurance benefits and reimbursements, we didn't go to, and this isn't me saying like, don't have an insurance practice, although we don't right. have an insurance practice. It's not to say that we didn't, you know, we didn't go to jail for um, non-complicated mechanical low back pain. You know, we went to jail for a principle. We went to jail and that's not to just say like Bible thumping, green book thumping, like that's not the type of person I am either. But I'm not not that, 
right? Like I, it, it lives and breathes with me every day, recognizing that we went to jail for practicing medicine for a license. We did virtually a century of like oppression against our profession to the point we had to actually sue the American Medical Association and win and finding them guilty for an illegal boycott against our profession where they, their mission was to contain and eliminate chiropractic. Like you, you have to realize that where we are today is an extension of that agenda, but it's not just the AMA anymore. It's not just medicine anymore. It's this cartel of conventional medicine, big pharma, big tech, mainstream media, governmental regulators all coming into play. And who the hell is standing up for these people right now? I'm seeing more lay people and more patients who've been through miraculous healings outside of the conventional medical community, stepping up bigger than chiropractors are. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what also led me to speaking up more is because I was, I was collaborating or reading from these people that are saying things that I've learned from like those pioneer chiropractors. They're saying the same exact message, mm -hmm. but one thing they don't have that we do. And I don't think you can, I, I don't know how you do both. Right. I don't know how you, I don't know how you experience the miracles in our practice and virtue signal with masks. I don't know how you do that. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's a, that's, that's a contradiction for me that I can't resolve. Right. Mm -hmm. And so with all that said, I don't think you also become, and this is like, you know, me by nature, I'm the most amiable dude on the planet. I'm so freaking nice to people. Like I, okay. I love people and I have a hard time. I have a hugely hard time. Like if somebody were to come into my office from the state saying you had to close, like I wouldn't be a jerk to the person. I just, I'm, it's not the, it's not my nature. Peaceful. Right. You're a peaceful but, warrior. But when it comes down to it, who's who, who else at this stage? Yeah. yeah. If knows? not me, then who? Yeah. Then who? right? If not now, you know, then when, and, right? At this moment in time, those of us also, I would say this, right? Recognizing where our history is and recognizing that the quote unquote opposition, they're not stopping. Like 5G is being installed for surveillance, 24 hour surveillance. And people don't believe that to be true, but you know, we're starting to see those, what do they call it? Per pathogenic, per no, no, that's, that's something else. It's when they start to put things in the media mm -hmm. and they start putting things like we're seeing, we're yeah. seeing Bill Gates, you know, saying, you know, we're seeing that he owns all the farmland in the U S or the majority of the farmland. Like, he know, he owns more like of our farmland than any other human being on the planet. And then it comes out the next week with an article that says all rich companies should be eating synthetic beef. And you think that that's not, that's real. That's the agenda, right? And we think that it might end. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a blessing and a huge curse to live in California where we just know it won't end. Like we, we know for a fact that the level of oppression that we've been dealing with that is potentially filtering into other states um, consistently by way of this very wealthy, very power hungry and very power rich, um, a, a, like people. And when you recognize that you, you, you can't not say something because not saying something is. I, I remember Tim Young very early on saying, you know, sis, once you, once you know a truth that more people need to know, it becomes your responsibility yeah. to yeah. share and it's yeah. like, I can't, I, I wish every day I could be quiet, but it's not in my nature to, yeah. to sit with that. And, you know, it's, um, and I do think that I'm seeing more leadership come through of all sorts, right? There was the health freedom summit, the virtual summit that was yeah. on this week. And, really? you know, it, here we have the censorship of Bobby and Dell getting taken off of Instagram. And instead of it feeling like a hit, I hear Dell's words of like, no, nah, man, that's our impact. We're winning. Like, this yeah. is good. And, and it causes more people like you and I to rise even higher when we see our leaders pushed back on. Yeah. So, so let's go. Um, you know, we could talk all day. And I, I, yeah. I venture to guess that we have lots of projects. Can I add one thing real quick? Yeah. So, so in, in my community, right? Like there, there aren't a ton of people speaking out right now. 
and there aren't a ton of chiropractors, but my buddy, Alex Zach, who just so you know, in like last year was supposed to be my 20 year reunion from West Point. Like that's how old I am. Right. Mm -hmm. And in 20 years, he's the first West Point grad that has ever been aligned with what I believe. Mm -hmm. I have been alone in this military world for 20 years. And when he, when he agreed to be at our, or he, he was remote into our, our freedom revival, he's like, I was talking to him cause I wasn't speaking out. I wasn't posting anything. I was posting cute pictures of my daughter and, you know, propagandizing a lot of the stuff that I was saying about microbiome and healing and how, how we raise her. And he was just like, dude, in the five minutes that I've just gotten to know you, like, you know, more of things that I don't know than I could ever even try to learn. And so like, it really hit me in my core. And I said, very frankly to him, I was like, dude, but I'm really curious. Like I'm really concerned about censorship, about ads, about Facebook and social media coming after us, about the mob coming after us. And he was like, dude, like, look at Tommy John, like look at Dr. Tommy John. He's right up the street from me. He has 77,000 followers. He's been practicing hardcore. Yes, he's shadow banned, but his practice has only grown in the time that, you know, things have been more chaotic and crazy and he stepped up to speak out. He's like, he's your guidepost. He's your guidepost. Has he been, has he been shut down from his practice? No. Right. And so, so for those of you who are at that level that potentially you're looking to step out into the fray or just into this fear, uncomfortability, use us as your guideposts. I'll just, I don't know, doc, yeah. but has yeah. your practice grown in the last year? Great. We're doing great. Absolutely. And, right. Like and, and for roof. every person that does turn away because of where we stand with masks or freedom or yeah. any of it, um, there's 10 more who say they're praying for us or thanking us for holding that freedom ground. So, so yeah. Yeah. And so, so there are people that are further ahead Mm -hmm. like the Bobbies and the Dells are getting deplatformed. And then there's those that are like, you know, Tommy and a lot of these Kelly Brogans, all these people who have been speaking out for a long time that they aren't necessarily being deplatformed on some things, on other things, right. some of them are. And then there's me where <laughs> like in six weeks of like posting stupid memes from Twitter, like I was like, dude, I don't know how to make a meme. And Alec was like, dude, go on Twitter type something up, screenshot it, and then post it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And in my following, which I don't like the word saying that because it feels weird to me, but to go from like under a thousand followers to pushing 14,000 in six weeks, because I wake up from my morning routine, I sit in my breath and I sit in my meditation and I sit there and I'm like, what is calling me to say? And I've been blogging every day for freaking six weeks. Mm -hmm. And what does it do to my practice? It qualifies and disqualifies patients long before they show up now. And they come in convicted as much as they, more than they've ever been. And my patients who've been with me navigating this world, treacherous world in Southern California from just as an analogy, the more I educate, the more they move. <laughs> like you're talking the mass exodus, yeah. Idaho, Texas, Franklin, Tennessee, people moving all over the place once they learn about this. But what they, what happens is they start sending the people who are already aligned with you yeah. and you don't have the funny dance. Well, and, and some of it is like, it's, it's soul calling where you're adjusting people with your blog, right? Like, you know, that, that someone asked me that a long time ago too, if you had to pick the adjustment or the philosophy, what's made the bigger impact on your life. And yeah. I mean, you can't have, it's chicken and the egg, right. But, yeah. but the philosophy that above down inside out, like these things that we just know now right? Yeah. People need to, to hear more. And I love the call to action that you're saying, wherever you're at, get a little bit bigger, get a little bit yeah. louder, just lean in a little bit more. Um, and now, because we both have pediatric and prenatal, if you could, if you could speak out to the mothers, to the, to the mothers that are trying to conceive, have conceived, getting ready for birth to the new parents, to the dads, parenting is an Olympic sport. Yeah. On a good day. <laughs> now in 2021 to our warrior parents, what say you to them? Specifically to the moms. Um, I think it's an absolute 
the most miraculous thing to realize like two half cells and 280 days later and a 26 billion cell being comes out and not one mom after hundreds that we've interviewed, you know, probably thousands for the collective, you know, both of us, probably millions of the pediatric and prenatal chiropractors that are out there, not one consciously controls the process. And when you recognize that, that that brilliance is marinating, fermenting your baby in that most miraculous form of love and compassion, which is called gestation and pregnancy, that that baby is birthed with that brilliance also. And any expression of that, of anything less than that brilliance isn't an error. It isn't genetic, you know, makeup and, you know, some sort of problem with the baby. It's an interference to that baby's innate ability to express its optimal potential. And I think if you understand that, then intuition doesn't go from this aside, right? Like doctors don't ask about intuition because it's not really a thing. And placebo isn't really that important. We isolate it out of our studies. Intuition, placebo, and this miraculous nature that is what my other analogy is one plus one is infinity, is that when you have two things that come together that are meant to just create this most powerful and beautiful thing, then the infinite is possible. And that's why you wear the shirt that you're wearing that says expect miracles, because in our practice, when we understand that that is what is inside of all of us, including all of our moms, which my number one question for every intake of every baby of every kid is what does your gut say? And what I tell moms is that you're, you're more than likely 90 to 95% there. And I just need to provide a little bit of that five and 10%. But they always ask me why I ask so many questions and I ask questions because it's already in you. Amen. Right. Amen. It's already in you that, that, you know, doctor of the future is the patient, right? I don't fix you because I don't believe you're broken. Um, and, and being a servant to helping people remember who they really are and, yeah. and, and the power that's been within them all along. You know, I'm from the Midwest we got a little movie called the wizard of Oz that I've seen 9,000 times being from Kansas. But I mean, what's she say, right? You've had the power all along. You just had to discover it for yourself. And that's what I believe my calling is as a chiropractor and as a, um, oh, I, I won't say leader, but voice really for truth and freedom yeah. during this time. And I don't need to be popular. Um, yeah, I just, I just want to be in alignment with my source that, that put me in this place. So I love all of that. And those questions now for the people who want more Dr. Stan, talk to us about this podcast and where people can find you and follow you. I know you and I were, were word, um, we watch our words. We understand the power of them. So I'm with you. Like I get that same cringe of, of following, but where can they tag along and play along with you in the world? I'd say that the most common places, and we're, we're actually going to have a podcast website soon, like in the next like couple of days. I'm so excited for that. And that, that will be at the future Um, You can follow us mostly. We're most active on Instagram where mine is Dr. Stanton hum. And then the podcast is Future Gen Podcast. And our podcast focus is, I mean, probably just right in alignment with what, what you guys do, where we really look at like natural healing and natural living, specifically natural birth and natural kids, and then self-healing, which is obviously foundationally chiropractic, but we do delve into breath work and other modalities that will absolutely also um, stir the pot of healing inside of everybody. And then a big flagship part of us is health freedom. Like we will never not be an advocate and activist and leaders and, you know, a lot of influencers, hopefully in the health freedom movement, because I believe that's, that's where we are at today. That is, that is the battleground. And like you said, it's like going to war on a daily basis yeah. because it's so against the tide. Right? Yeah. There's work to be done. And, yeah. um, and we're, we're all in at this point, yeah. chips are on the table. Let's go. Um, and you have another event coming up. When is that? We do have another event. It's going to be March 27th. We have Dell Big Tree confirmed 
we're working on a few other big names, which I just like, I can't like envision it. I'm attracting it. We have Lee Dundas, human rights attorney. She is very, very vocal about mass, especially in the state of California. And she has a very unique perspective working in third world communist countries for over a decade. And so she knows what that tyranny looks like. We have Dr. Brett Jones, which I love. I love this man. And I, I, I have never actually had a full on conversation with him, got to interview him recently. And he just blew my mind with a lot of the um, amazing work that he's doing. We have Dr. Tommy John confirmed because uh, he's going to okay. be probably our okay. resident speaker because uh-huh. he's one, probably the most attractive chiropractor on the planet. But at the same time, you know, visually right. and energetically, like, right. One of the most Backs it up. He's got a lot of power in that voice. Yeah. Like that's yeah. Yeah. So we're looking to book a couple more. We want to peel back the curtain on what the agenda looks like. And so if anybody is in Southern California listening to this, or if you want to fly out for it, we found a hotel that doesn't require masks. That's going to stay private as well. And so there's a, and our, and our venue. So, you know, we have to, according to our venue is like a fortress mm-hmm. and the owner is from communist Russia. And he's like, I am 100% all in and protecting your guys' ability to have this event. He knows the cops, he knows everybody in the neighborhood. And so this event is not only going to be secure, but it's going to be one of the most impactful that I think are this year we're kicking off 2021. And we want to celebrate the year, right? It's a year of lockdown, but it's also a year of a revival for freedom that I I am so grateful to see on in our country, but around the world. There are real problems. And then there are the ones we create with our mind, right? The what ifs and the the traps and the persecutions that haven't happened, right? Mm -hmm. This fear that it's our own fear that imprisons us more than some of these, these limitations that challenges that we've been gifted. And we've got one of those beautiful um, freedom keepers as well here that hosts events. And so, you know, another final call to action is anybody in your hometown community, you can reach out to either one of us because that whole that idea of it is time to be the change you can't the day of waiting for the hero to arrive is over yeah you are the hero you you are the hero of your health of your life it is up to you to be the change if you hear that calling nagging in your ear it ain't gonna go away (laughs) so so if you need some help i mean we're here i would love that and and I'll, i'll i'll manifest one day we could hosted an event one day with pop-ups all over the country, right? Where we could unite in freedom together in this those summer. places. Yeah. This summer. Let's do it. Yeah. So I love you. I'm so grateful for you. And here, I love this little time capsule because we'll revisit it in a few months when we're winning even more. So yeah. cheers and prayers and blessings to your beautiful family and practice. Love you, Devin. Same to you. Guys, I'll attach notes on where you can find him. And I I have a full page of nuggets from this guy. So we'll type up some goodies for you and he'll share some links. If you can get to San Diego in March, that's a powerful crew he's packing the house with. So thank you, thank you. We'll be seeing you soon.